G'day, Peter here from Oz Commercial Sewing Machines. Um, today we're just going to do a quick little video on the threading of the Jack E4S Industrial Overlocker 4 thread. Okay, so we'll start by coming up here. Um, we'll do this as a combination. Uh, we got four cones of standard thread. Okay, there's the, uh, the thread post that comes with the machine. And there's your top set of guides, which comes down to uh, that set of guides. Okay, so all of them have their own um, guide section so that they're kept separate. Uh, all the way down to the machine, where they come into the, uh, the guides before the thread tension assemblies. Now, as you can see, you now where the threads come in, there is two sets of holes. So what you're doing is you're coming down from these sets of guides up here. We're coming down and we're going to go down through the closest hole to the guide. So we're going to go down through there and then come out and around to the front and back down again on each of these sets of thread guides. So there's two holes on each one. Now the next is we're going to come down and go into the thread tension assemblies. There's a guide hole here before you go into the thread tension assemblies on each of these assemblies. So there's there, there, and there. Now when you go into these assemblies, the thread tension assemblies, make sure that you're actually getting the thread to go right in there hard against the shaft of the thread tension assembly so that they, um, the discs are actually going to do their job and clamp the thread and create the tension required. So each one, the uh, obviously the needle threads are going to be a little bit uh, stiffer springs than what the, uh, the loopers are because they're doing different jobs totally. But then we come out to the bottom of the thread tension assemblies and we have another set of guides. So there's one there, one there, and one there. The left hand needle has a different guide. It comes out the side of the assembly there into this thread guide here. Now, we're going to handle each of these threads differently now as we go down into the machine. So from, this is the lower looper. Right, so we're going to come down into this thread tube, which then allows the thread to go in behind this door assembly and into all the, uh, the mechanism inside the machine here. Now, you can see that we're color coded and there is a stitch diagram, a thread diagram here, sorry. Now you can see this is green, which is the correct color code for the lower looper. Now the upper looper here, you'll see it's as red. Now it's not actually red in the machine. You'll see that the colors are actually blue. So they've got this one and this one mixed up in the color code. So this red is actually blue markings on the machine. So we'll start with the lower looper. We're coming down out of the uh, thread tube, which puts it into the machine, down to the first of the thread guides, which is a double assembly here. It's, it's one big bracket that has these two guides. And they're stationary. They don't move. Um, okay, then for the lower looper, we're going to go down here. And as you can see down here, the color is green. As per normal domestic overlockers, it's color coded. And yes, it threads basically the same. So you can see there the green color code. It associates with a green dot. Okay, so we got this guide. Then we're going to go 
to this guide. You can see under there, there is a green dot. Then we're gonna go straight across to this one. You can see just there, there is a green dot. Okay, through this guide and up to the back side of this lower looper. So there's a hole there, which I've just got the skewer in now, which the thread goes through. Now I'll wind this through so that I can put the looper on the other side so we can see what it's doing. There we go. Now if we come over the back side here and we will have a look at this lower looper. So you can see that there is gone into the groove there but there it is you can see that that thread there okay coming through the hole down here in the back of the mechanism and then we're going to come through there's a hole up here which you put the thread into and it comes out this side okay and there's a groove that the thread runs in for the full length of that lower looper okay so there is the thread there and then i'll wind it back through again and we'll see the top side you can see there we've run the thread through that guide at the end there that's the last guide for the lower looper you can see though that the um, the groove there that the thread runs in you can sort of see it a little bit better there and that's the lower looper completely threaded okay now we'll move on to the upper looper so starting here again where we've come from up the top section so we're going to go there now you will come down you can sort of see if we get in close enough there's a blue dot there, okay? It's just to the uh, to the back side of that thread guide. So we're gonna go through that guide, then up to the next guide, which is also colored blue, which you can see next to the pointer there, okay? Then we're going to go back down here and you can see if we move this thread out of the way there is a little blue dot right next to that hole so we're going to go in through that then travel up here to the next there's a blue dot there okay up through there and into the back end of the upper looper i'll just put that in the right spot there so that we can see what's doing now you can see there's a hole now we've gone we put the thread into the back of this looper and it's come out in here and you can see now that there is a groove same as what's on the lower looper and the thread travels inside that groove and then we've got that hole the final th thread guide at the end of that looper which then takes the thread out to the back of the machine and that's the completed lower looper threading so just i'll give you a quick look here and i'll spin the machine so that you can see what happens in here okay so that's all the mechanisms in action Right, so next we'll move to the needle threading. So we've come out of these two. They're marked yellow and red. Same colour as their guides will be marked. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to come out of the bottom of this guide and into the bottom guide over here. Whereas this red one the left hand needle 
goes straight out of there, straight out of the thread tension assembly into that guide. It doesn't have one of these bottom guides. It doesn't need it because it's going straight across. This one sort of diverts it a little bit lower and then across. Moving across, you can see we're going to come out of these guides. Now this felt here is a thread lubricator. Now this tank, you can, if you feel you need to, uh, depending on the, the type of thread you're using, you can fill it up with a lubricator, thread lubricating fluid, which will soak this uh, felt and lubricate the thread as it passes by. Now, then after it goes across that uh, lubricating felt, it then goes into this guide set up here. You can see the first one, the first guide is there. Okay, this is the right hand needle. And then the top one is the left hand needle. Okay, moving into here, we've got a guide system at the lower side and a guide system at the upper side. As you can see that. Now, as we come out of there, you can see which the th where the threads go. I'll sort of move that a little bit so we can see a little better. It does move. You can see both of those guides there where the threads are going. Okay. So moving over the here now, on the exit to these guides, you can see... Now we've got red, which coincides with the top needle, uh, sorry, the left hand needle, and the yellow, which coincides with the right hand needle. So we're going to come out of there, out of there, and go into these next two guides before we go down the needle bar. Left hand needle, right hand needle, red, yellow. Now. After we've been through these guides from the front to the back, there is this spring-loaded thread holder before you go down into the, um, the lower thread guide or the needle bar thread guide. So this is spring-loaded. You have to make sure that the thread goes behind these two captives on either side. There is a bottom one as well. So the left-hand needle goes over this side of this nut, a bolt, or screw, whatever you want to call it. There is a spring on there. And then we've got this one here. Both sides, it's just held on by that spring-loaded screw. You can see that that is sprung there. Okay, then we're going to come down out of there into this needle bar thread guide. Once we've been through that needle bar thread guide, I'll just move the needles up slightly. So then we can see where we've got to go. So once, once you come out of this lower guide here, you're going to travel down the needles and thread them front to back. And making sure that when your needles are put in, they're put in as close as possible to straight so that they, the, um, so that the upper and lower looper pickups will pick up the thread. Like this here, is your upper looper pickup and the back side is your lower looper pickup. All right, I hope this helps. Thanks very much.